If you've ever wanted to film your own YouTube videos, but you just don't know how to set the lights up and you don't know what to do to get started, this video is for you. I'm going to be giving you a behind the scenes look at what Hope Taylor's video setup looks like and how we accomplish the end result that you see every week on her YouTube channel. friends and welcome back to Hope's channel. Obviously I am not Hope, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Josh Medlin. I am a video producer and video content strategist based in Orange County, California, and I have been producing Hope's content for six to seven years now. And that means that everything from her educational content to her YouTube content, that's all stuff that I personally produced and created myself. By far one of the biggest questions that I get as well as Hope is how do I build out her YouTube studio setup? Um, the setup is very similar to how I film her courses um, because lighting actually is pretty simple. It doesn't have to be too complex. So I'm not going to ramble too much because I've already filmed this video. One thing to note, uh, if you're wondering what this fluffy guy is right here, this is called a dead cat and it's to stop sounds like this. They're called plosive sounds in video and audio from popping on the mic in music recording studios. It's usually like a circle piece of felt called a pop filter. Um, it's basically to make sure that you don't have any puffing going into the microphone that you don't want going in there. As you'll see, as soon as I cut to the footage that I filmed at Hopes, I filmed this very quickly and impromptu, and I couldn't find the little dead cat filter um, that goes onto my Rode wireless system, which is what I was using, and you're gonna hear a lot of those plosive sounds. So, note to self, make sure you use one of these if you're gonna be talking very close to the mic like this, um, but for the sake of the video, that's actually not how I have Hope talking into it, so you'll see that in a second when I cut to that footage, but I did just want to make a note of it because I'm a stickler for hearing stuff like that in my audio when I don't want to hear it. So without further ado, I'm going to jump to that footage that I filmed in Hope's home studio, you'll see that it doesn't have to be as complicated as you think it does. A lot of people I know personally don't get into video and don't get into doing video production content, whether that's creatives or small business owners that I talk to, because it's just simply very daunting and overwhelming. Um, but my whole goal with all the content that I'm putting out is to show people it doesn't actually have to be that hard and that difficult. So sticking with the theme of helping and keeping things about video content super simple and easy to attain and understand stand actually created a free video quick start guide think of it as a little bit of a video cheat sheet on how to get up and running very quickly with your video setup if you already have a camera whether you have an iphone because i get a lot of technical questions on a daily basis on instagram again that's 100 free no catch at all just my gift and my way of saying thank you to hope specifically i want to give back to her audience uh saying thank you for letting me on the platform um it's been really awesome building her YouTube channel with her over all these years, and you guys are awesome, and she's grown an amazing audience. So, just trying to help out in any way that I can. So, again, I keep on saying that I'm not gonna ramble, but I keep rambling. <laughs> I'm gonna cut to the footage, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. All right, I am on set here at Hope's house in her home office, and I actually just built a completely new set. So I think a thing that holds a lot of people back from starting their own YouTube channel is all this crazy lighting over here. I know it looks really scary, but the truth is it's actually not that scary at all. It's not that hard at all. And if you know how to do a few simple things and it makes it incredibly simple and easy to set up. So my goal with this set is to actually set help up so that she can just turn on her camera and click record with it being as simple as possible. Once it's set up, once you have this initial setup phase done, it's really just as simple as sitting down and clicking record. So a few quick things to note. The first thing is the lighting doesn't have to be that difficult or expensive. I actually only use this light right here, which if you see my other one light video setup, you'll know that you can really just use just this light. And that's what's right behind me right now. It's the Aperture Amaran 100D. The Amaran series is Aperture's budget line of cinema lights. I'm gonna use air quotes for that because even though it's budget, that just means it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, in terms of build quality, it's not a full metal jacket like my other Aperture lights, which are like all metal and just super tough build quality. These are a little bit more like prosumer grade, so they're made out of plastic, but for the sake of lighting a YouTube video, it doesn't need to be that heavy duty. Most likely you're just gonna be setting it up in a home office like this and you're gonna set it and forget it, like I said. So these lights run for around $199. They make a little bit of a higher wattage one called the 200D. 
the 100 and 200 just stands for the wattage amount on the actual cinema light. But for most people, unless you're trying to shoot with like the windows open in the background, 100D is perfectly fine and perfectly adequate in terms of wattage for what you're going to need. So I have two of those, one right behind me as the key light, and then you see this lantern attachment up there. It's the same light, it just has a lantern attachment instead of the dome attachment, and we'll get to that in just a second. So another thing to make your life easier is you're going to want to close your windows. Um, if you don't have big thick blinds like these, then you can just drape over a curtain or you can if you really want to get really janky with it, you can put over a blanket. I've also done that in the past. Basically, you just don't want the sun to be coming in and out and changing the look of your set. That's going to make things a lot harder for you in post-production. So I always shoot with these completely closed, whether I'm shooting at home or whether I'm shooting for clients or shooting for hope. I'm always going to close the windows and only use this continuous artificial light. The only other light that we have on set here is this Aperture B7C. When I cut to the wide angle and show you what the actual set that looks like, you'll see that there is something on set called a practical light. Now, you can use just a regular light bulb for this if you would like, but I really like these B7Cs because it allows you to dial in the color temperature exactly as well as the brightness. If you have something like a practical light on set that's a lamp, it might be a little bit nicer to control the brightness, the exact color temperature, all that stuff. If that's a little bit too advanced for you, then you can just put in a regular light bulb, but I just wanted to show you guys what this was. It's not a regular light bulb back there, it's actually battery powered, and they all connect to something called the side is Link app, which is a cool mobile app that you can put on your phone and you can actually control all three of those lights completely from your phone, which again, makes it a lot more simple if you're filming on your own and you don't have someone here to be lighting and changing the color temperature and all that stuff for you. So now let's talk about audio. So there's a couple different options you can do for audio. Originally I had Hope set up with this Rode Link system, Weirdly, I think she lives near a radio station or something, so you would literally just hear Eminem rapping in the background of her videos, which is not at all what we were going for. So you can also get these guys, which is what I'm talking into right now. They actually have a built-in mic to it, or you can plug in a lavalier microphone. Uh, they're a really good option. They're not that expensive. They're around two to three hundred dollars. But what I actually hooked Hope up with this time, so that she doesn't have to worry about these running out of battery or anything like that, is we got a mic that doesn't require phantom power. Phantom power is basically just a mic that needs to be powered through the camera. And I also didn't want to hook her up with another microphone that had batteries in it because those can die. And if you're filming on your own, it can be kind of hard to tell if a mic's about to die or not because usually you can't see that while you're filming. So I wanted to take out all of those variables and make it as easy as possible. So what I did is just hooked her up with a Rode shotgun mic. Now, I don't typically recommend using shotgun mics because they're really far away from your mouth, which makes it sound really tinny and it picks up a bunch of background noise. But a way to get around that is to boom the mic. Basically, it's just a long arm that extends the mic and gets it as close to her mouth as possible and I'll show you guys in just a second but basically it is just hanging just outside of frame and it's as close to her mouth as humanly possible. If I left the mic on top of the camera that would be picking up air conditioners and there's like a washer and dryer going on in the other room right now a bunch of background noise that it's not gonna sound very good and it's not gonna sound a high quality. This is a better view of what the boom mic looks like. Basically all I did was took a regular shotgun mic that you usually put on top of your camera at, you can see right here is a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack. It just goes into the regular microphone port on your camera. And this is just a extendable audio cable. So we have it plugged in here. This runs all the way down here and then into her Canon R6. Again, this is a lot more simple and a lot easier than trying to check batteries and stuff when she's filming on her own. That can be pretty difficult to do. So minimizing the headaches that you have when you film makes it a lot easier to be consistent and stay active on YouTube, which is obviously one of the most important things. So again, you can see that it's boomed here straight just out of camera. Um, when I show you what the actual footage looks like, once Hope gets into here, you'll be able to see that if I lower this even just a little bit, you're gonna be able to see it into the frame. So you're gonna wanna lower this all the way until you can see it in the frame and then just pick it up a little bit so it's just outside of the frame and then move it as close as you can. That's why we have this boom arm to get it as close to your mouth as possible. That's gonna be the most clean sounding audio that you're gonna get from a shotgun mic. Okay, so now jumping back to lighting. As you can see right here, this is that same Aperture 100D that I mentioned earlier in the video and the thing to know about these lights is they're called COB video lights. Again, I have a video about this on my channel that you can go look at, I'll link it right here. But basically, you can't just use these straight out of the box without what's called a modifier. You need something to modify the light. Basically, when you take these out of the box and you turn them on, they are very bright, 
very intense and very direct, which is why people use them with what's called modifiers. This is a dome modifier, probably runs anywhere from 70 to 200 bucks, depending on what brand you get. But the main thing to know about this is it basically just scatters the light, makes it nice and even on your face. This is what's called a key light. Basically, all you need to know about a key light, it is the main thing, main source of light that's lighting you as a subject, as a YouTuber, as a personality in the video. Basically, the bigger the modifier, the more even and beautiful and nice the light is going to look on your face. They make some smaller modifiers than this, so if you don't have quite as big of an office space, you can get smaller dome diffusers. Again, I'll link those all down in the description. But for the sake of this video, this is a pretty good in-between size, I would say. I have a little bit of a bigger one that I use on client shoots, uh, but this one is kind of a good medium size. And I believe this one is made by Aperture. It's the Light Dome 2, and I think that runs anywhere from 100 to 150. Again, I'm not exactly sure, but I will link that right down below for the exact price. So Hope has a pretty bright style to her YouTube videos and just her brand in general. So in order to keep that cohesive with her brand voice and brand aesthetic, I went ahead and set this to 35% and this background light over here is set to 100%. Basically, in simple terms, what that does is it just makes the image a little bit more even and less contrasty and moody and shadowy. If you have a little bit more of a darker brand, you might not even need a light back there or if you do have a light on back there, you do not have to have it at 100%. Um, or you might want to make this brighter and then that a little bit lower in the background so that you're more bright and the background's darker. It all really just depends on the style. But if you like the style of Hope's videos, then basically, again, how I set this is this key light is set to 35% and the background light, which I'm about to show you in just a second, is set to 100% with a lantern attachment. Okay, so if the key light is a cone shape or a dome shape and is kind of focusing the light on you as the subject, what I have in the background here is what's called a lantern attachment. As you can see, it kind of goes with the name. It's shaped like a lantern and it's in the shape of a big bulb. And all that does is basically just scatters the light all across the background in order to make it nice and evenly lit. Again, if you have a little bit of a darker style, you might not even need this second light. I just kind of do that to make the style nice, bright, and cohesive with host branding. But if you wanted to get away with a little bit of a cheaper setup, you don't necessarily have to do a lantern attachment as well as another 100D. Another thing you can do instead of this lantern attachment is you can actually put on the cone modifier that comes with the light and fire that at the ceiling at 100% brightness. This is what we used to do for Hope Set, but since we switched to this bookcase, there's a little bit more shadows and it wasn't quite giving me the light coverage that I needed, which is why I switched to this lantern modifier. If you want to know exactly how I set up Hope's old setup, you can actually download that in a free guide that I've made called my video quick start guide. Basically just goes through a couple different things you need to know in order to get started with filming your own videos. So that sounds helpful that it's also linked down below. Okay, so lastly what we have is what's called a practical light. Again, a practical light is just anything that's in the frame that is looking like a regular light that you would see in a typical scenario, in a typical house, It's that's why it's called practical. That could be like a kitchen light, that could be a lamp like I'm using right here. It's basically just anything that you'd see in natural everyday life. Obviously, if I had a cinema light back here, that would not necessarily be a practical light because it doesn't look like a practical lamp that you would see in a regular house. I like to use something like this when I want the vibe to feel a little bit more cozy and relaxed, and it brings in a little bit of warmth because these lights are all daylight bound so it can be a little bit harsh and it can kind of wash things out which is why I like to use a practical light sometimes but again I didn't use this in Hope's old set this is just something we're introducing now and I've used it on other video courses and stuff that I filmed in the past and I really like the look of it okay so lastly in this setup is the camera and that's going to be probably the thing most of you are wondering about this really just depends on what you have access to a lot of people that are watching this are probably following me because of Hope or because of knowing me from the photography industry so many of you probably have a Canon R6, which is a great video camera. Basically, the only thing you need to really look for in one of these video cameras is something that has face tracking autofocus, or if you're using an iPhone, then it already has face tracking autofocus. So that's really the biggest thing, especially with filming yourself, is you want something that has eye tracking. I'm looking at my camera right now and it's actually tracking my eye making sure that I'm in focus. If I was trying to rack focus and stuff, I would probably be out of focus for most of this video. Since I'm filming this myself, it's very nice to have face tracking out of focus because I can kind of just set it and forget it. I know it's gonna track my eye and most modern cameras have incredibly good autofocus. The only caveat is if you're using something a little older like a Canon Mark III or an older Nikon DSLR camera, those probably don't have the best autofocus, but if you have anything made in the last, I'd say two or three years, and it's probably pretty good. So. 
For settings, we have her set into just the standard picture profile. We have manual audio adjustments. Basically what we did is we had Hope go through a couple lines of her YouTube script and I set it to where the levels were bouncing around negative 12 dB. dB just stands for decibels, which is how loud the audio is actually coming in. You wanna make sure it's not getting too hot. Again, this is something you can do when you set your setup. You can kind of just set it and forget it. If you talk around the same levels when you do your videos, you really don't have to worry about this too much. You can use auto levels if you want to. It's just going to be a little bit more noisy and sound a little bit less good than if you did manual levels. All right, now I'm behind the camera so I can show you a little bit of what the settings look like for this. We have her at a shutter speed of one over 80. Technically that should be double whatever your frame rate is, which we're shooting in 4K, 23.9 frames per second. So if you double that, that would really be one over 48. So you can break this 180 degree rule if you would like to. Uh, just don't crank it up too high is my recommendation, but I have it set to one over 80, which is technically breaking the rules, but that's okay because this is just a YouTube video. I have it set to f2.8. I really wouldn't go any lower than that. Um, if you go lower than that, the aperture is going to be a little bit too low and you have the possibility of just having everything in the background be too out of focus. Uh, and again, if you don't have a good autofocus system, it's just not going to look that good. Moving over to ISO, most mirrorless cameras you just want to leave that as close to 100 as possible. Again, the fact that we're using uh, controlled lighting means you really shouldn't have to bump the ISO too much. That's going to give you the cleanest image. So instead of uh, bumping up your ISO, I would just say if it looks a little bit dark, then just up the brightness on your video lights. Uh, again, you can do that by the dial on the back of the actual light. In terms of other video settings, if you go here into the first tab, you can see we have re movie record quality. I have it set into 4K, uh, 23.98p, which is just the frame rate. 4K is the video resolution. Um, if you have a little bit of a slower computer, I'd probably recommend shooting in something like uh, full HD, which is just 1080p, and shoot that also in 23.9. 29 or 30p is kind of more of a soap opera look or like a standard TV show look. 23 is what is considered cinema standard, so I just always use that because I come with a video background. So again, shooting in 4K, 23, IPB. IPB is a little bit more compressed codec, and it's going to be a little bit easier on your hard drives and just memory's sake. And then lastly, you can see right here that I have that that boom mic that we we're talking about earlier with an extendable 3.5 millimeter audio cable and I have that running into the microphone port. Make sure that's running into the microphone port and not the headphone port. You'll be very angry at yourself if you film an entire YouTube video and that was plugged into the wrong port. Trust me on this because I've actually done that in the past and it was not a good day for me. One other quick disclaimer and thing to note about shooting on uh, these photo cameras is you want to make sure it's actually set to video mode. If you look on the top right corner right there, you can see there's a little movie camera that means it's set into video mode and it's set to manual in video mode. Uh, I like to set it to manual because I like to control all my settings, especially if you're shooting with controlled lighting like we're in right now. You wanna make sure it's the same for every single video. That way it makes your editing life a whole lot easier. So I have it set to video mode and I have it set to manual video mode. Most cameras, you can just do it from the dial up top. I'll actually zoom out real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. This dial right up here usually has the setting. So I, this is just like a little click dial and it's set to the video camera icon. Depending on what brand you're using, it might look a little bit different. All right, we have Hope here as a model to show you guys what the lighting actually looks like in application. So I'm going to go ahead and click record on her R6. I'm going to show you what it looks like with each one of the lights turned off. So starting with the backlight, you can see that probably looks extremely dark. And if we go back in and we turn off her key light, that looks even worse. So adding back in the key light, that's what it looks like there. And then adding in the background light, you can see it fills in the background very nicely and makes it look nice and even, which matches Hope's brand aesthetic. One last thing before I wrap up this video, I wanted to show you guys what the audio quality sounds like when Hope is talking. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Hope and I am a senior portrait and wedding photographer serving both Charleston and Savannah. And this YouTube channel is where I share education for photographers as well as a little bit of a peek into my life living in the low country. Well, there you have it. And she constantly makes me feel very bad about how I talk inside video. So that was it for the behind the scenes tour of Hope's YouTube setup. Hopefully you see that video doesn't have to be as complicated as you might think. Um, it really, I mean, Hope's setup can look a little bit daunting 
daunting because there's more than one light but if you're looking for something like a one light video setup i've also filmed a video about that and you can check that out down below and also don't forget to check out that quick start video guide if you're more of a text person or pdf person this is all laid out a lot of this information is laid out in pdf form so you can refer to it uh, see what settings you need to use and all that good stuff so again thanks for watching make sure to subscribe because i am producing all this content that's on this channel and i'm super excited about it so next week it'll be back to hope but thanks for having me on the channel and i hope you guys enjoyed